from Ohio. Praise God for you on today and those of you in your living room, your bedroom, wherever you may be. I thank God for you chiming in with us today. And I hope today is a day that you're looking for, been experiencing something already in Jesus' mighty name. I'm not going to try to hold you long, but I don't have no control over what the Holy Ghost want to do. Hallelujah. I just want to be obedient to God. Release the word of God and watch God move. So today, we're going to talk about something we always talk about. Y'all ready? Could we cut that fan down a little low? Hallelujah. Today, I just want to visit a, a passage of scripture in the form of a question. Is that all right? I'm always asking questions. So my question this morning to you is my message. Do you really want to change? Y'all got y'all quiet already. I should have heard from had, had folks shout now. Yes, Lord, change me, Lord, fix me. I'm gonna ask that again. Do you really want to change? Everybody saying they don't change. Everybody talking about change. Everybody even making change. But this question is personal. It's for you. It's for me. Do you? Really want to change? Everybody say this is the new year. I'm making a new resolution. But is your resolution got something to do with a change? Hallelujah. Just in case you didn't know what change means, let's give a little definition. What change means. Change is defined as it means to alter, vary, modify or to make something become new or different. Now y'all think about this here definition and think about you today. All I want you to do is look at you. Don't look at nobody else, no husband, no wife, no children, no grandchildren. Just look at you. Today is your special day. Amen. Have you altered, varied, modified, or made something become new or different. So that's what our focus is today. I'm going to try to do this thing and wrap it up. So we're going to get that first passage of the scripture. Talking about change. The word of God says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, an acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, when we talk about transform by the renewing of your mind, that means transform means change. When you transform it, you're changing it to something else. Y'all know the movie Transformer. You don't know what you may get. You don't know what going to roll up on you. So, but the, but the question is, are you changing? Are you transforming? In order to transform, it begins with the mind. <coughs> transform by the renewing of your mind. Change your mind, you will change your life. If you still got a negative mindset, your life going to be negative. If your mind is, I just don't like folk, well, you will never have a friend. If your mind still saying them folks hypocrite, then you may be one too. I'm coming to tell the truth and to help you change your mind and change. Tell somebody to transform. <coughs> we gonna go a little bit far. I got an amen over there from the little baby. Praise God in the house. I hope I hear from somebody today. I hope somebody, when you hear the word, come down your street. You got enough boldness to get up and say, that's me, Lord. You talking to me, Lord. Let's not be fake no more. Let's get a real change. Everybody's saying change, but when you look at their life, it's still the same. I ain't trying to win no friends. I'm trying to win souls. So we're going to go and look at a story up in John 5. The Gospel of John, chapter 5. We're going to expound on verse 2 and 8, and I'm going to try to break it down as I go. And it reads as follows. 
Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. I'm going to expound on two and three for right now. In these, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Now when I read that right there, that sound like us. Can, can I be real about it? They was on the porch. How many folks sat on the porch for a long time? Your porch, family porch, the church porch, wherever there is something holding with a post, that's a porch. But what got me, they said there was these, that great a multitude of people laid, unpotent folk, like us, as I said. Some was blind and broken. Some was withered, need, they was paralyzed, halted, but they was waiting for something. Right. Now, you may not have those important ailments, but you have a messed up mind, you have a messed up heart, your, mind, your, your heart need to be fixed, and then your eyes can't see because you're seeing everything of the devil instead of seeing in the spirit of God. <coughs> we got a love problem. We got a friendly problem. Let's be, come on, somebody say, keep it real. I'm going to keep it real because I'm going to try to get some real folks delivered. I'm trying to get them folks that say they saved, but they still got issues delivered today. Amen. Can I help somebody? So let me go on. In other words, if you see all of this, you need to admit that something is wrong with you. Something been wrong with me. Do I have anybody that's willing to be free today? Look, the pot can't talk about the kettle, as grandmama then would say. What's wrong with me may not be wrong with you. What's wrong with you may not be wrong with me. But the bottom line, there's something wrong. There are issues going on in your life that Jesus needs to fix it. I just want to help somebody. I'm going to pose the question. Do you really want to change? If you want change, you got to receive the word, hear the word, and apply that word. You got to believe and understand that word is for me today. I need some help today. Don't, don't, don't act like you got it all together. Because if I can't see you, Jesus can. We all need some change. Have you ever thought about how long you've been in the situation that you're in? From teenager on up to now, you've been sitting, you've been smoking, you've been drinking, you've been sexing outside of Mary, you come to church, you shaking and you faking it till you make it, you shouting, you speaking it tongue, but ain't nothing changing. <coughs> you don't have to say amen. I told you, I just come to save some folks. I come to wreck your world today. I come to uncover some stuff today. All of that stuff you done had buried, that you got it together, you trying to prophesy to folks, and you trying to give folks a word when you need a word. I hope somebody hear me today. Wherever you may be, hear the word of the Lord today. Because I come to stir you up. I come to stir up a fire in you to get right. So the grandma and them say, get right, church, and let's go home. This world is almost over with. And he called me just for this purpose. Let's look at verse 4 and 5. I just want to hit it. It says, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever did first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole or whatsoever disease he had, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. Let me start right there. Tell somebody this. Help is on the way. You hearing the word, but help is on the way. One thing I like about these potent folks, they were sitting there on the porch, this passage of scripture say one man 
was had an infirmity for 30 and eight years. Now we can't talk about them because as I read, I heard some, I saw something. At least they had enough faith to just sit and wait. What are you doing? Instead of us waiting on God, we complaining, we moving in the flesh. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it, but yet you ain't got no healing. You done missed the troubling of the water because you done missed your season. Y'all ain't ready for this. 30 and 8 years. Look at yourself for a moment and see how long you have been right there. You mad, you angry, you raging, you fussy, you don't want to be around nobody, you all closed in to yourself. You need some help. I come to let you know today is your season. This your season to come out of whatever you feel you need to come out of. Somebody should have stood up right then and there, because that's a sign I'm coming out. I said today is your season. And the troubling of the water has already begun. What you mean? Well, the word will trouble you. And out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. And I'm speaking life today. I'm speaking that there's something in your spirit going to begin to bubble and rubble that you get an overflow within yourself. <clears throat> Somebody looking for an overflow today. And I come to help you get your overflow because I need to overflow myself. This word preached to me first. And I ain't come to hurt nobody feeling. I just come to help you get a breakthrough. You need friends that's going to tell you the truth. Everybody, you all right, I got you. But what can you do for me? Can you speak in my life? Can you tell me the truth? Can you say, hey, come up out of that mess because you better than that. God don't want you to be an angry and mean and mad. Don't you know that's not the spirit of Christ? The spirit of Christ making life. You got to start telling, have friends to tell you, you know what, baby, that you, you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I'm telling you today, I'm not satisfied with where you at, what you doing, because when I look at you, I see greater. Greater. You quit settling for lesser day and begin to walk in your greater day. That's where change begins. My God, I just want to help somebody. Before I go any further, I want to let you know the number one key thing for change. Y'all ready for that? It's a five-letter grace word, and his name called Jesus. You want change, but you don't want Jesus. He has the power for change. J-E-S-U-S. That's my grace. Hallelujah. But he called us to have greater grace. Somebody tell somebody. Can you hear him now? Don't hear me, but just hear the God in me. Come on, let's go and do this story. I ain't going to hold you long. I'm going to get to right to the point. Y'all got me? Verse 6. Oh, okay, y'all. Did I do verse 5? Yeah, okay, verse 6. Look what they say. When Jesus saw him lying and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? Can I say it like I want? Do you want some change? That's all Jesus asked. Do you want to change? The important man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another step down before me. Back to verse 6. I want to pull out something for you. Look at what they say. When Jesus saw him, do, do you not know that Jesus see you? He see you right where you are. He see your state of mindset. 
He see all of your ways, all of your disappointment, all of your frustration. He saw him. And he knew that he had been there. Jesus is an all-knowing God. <coughs> Somebody say it with me, a long time. He was in that same state. He said unto him, will thou be made whole? <coughs> Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say, will you or uh, would you like to be healed? Because when you are made whole, that's from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, inside and outside. He don't do no junk. He do an overhaul on those who want to be made whole. But look at us. Look how we answer. We come right on with our complaints. Sir, I have no man. See, he missed God right there. He said he don't have a man because he looking at them of uh, the wrong man instead of looking up to Jesus, who is the man with the plan, got everything he could ever need. When the water is troubling, somebody say the water is troubling. The water is troubling. But ain't nobody got up and moved because they don't understand season. Seasons is right now. Y'all, that's going over your head. When the water is trouble to put me into the pool, what are you waiting on folks to do? <coughs> you still waiting on folks to make you happy. You still make, waiting on folks to call and check on you. You still waiting on somebody, because I ain't I'm broke, busted, and disgusted. You still want somebody to call you and give you a little dollar. What are you waiting on? You still waiting on folk to come pray over you when you have the power within to pray over yourself. Quit finding excuses not to change. I would change, but them folk at the church, they ain't nothing but hypocrites. So are you. They faint. So are you. All they do is keep up mess. So is you. Let's keep it real. Think about all them thoughts you done said about other folk. But you forgot to look at yourself. You still talking about folk, but you don't understand them same folk you talking about praying for your soul. And the prayers of a righteous man are very much. We declare and decree that you are saved in Jesus' name. You are set free in Jesus' name. I just want to mess up and trouble the water. I'm just troubling in the water. I'm causing trouble that your water begin to bubble. Waiting on folks to put you somewhere that God already said you should be. But while I am coming, another step down before me. If our mindsets would change, and it said the first one. See, you got to hear the scripture. It said when the first one get in the water, they can be made whole. But it never did say if nobody else got in there, they wouldn't be made whole. See, here's the word of the Lord. If somebody had a just some getting in there, say, I'm going to roll yourself on over there. If you're paralyzed, scoot. If your legs hurting, hop. You still got an excuse not to change, not to be made whole. Just like today, you should have been standing up, declaring that I am here, I am delivered, I am set free, past our marriage going to another level, just because of change. You waiting on the psalm of sad ceremony. Come on, stand up and clap your hands. Come on, stand to your feet and give God a ways. The devil is a lie. I know my season. Summer, winter, spring, and fall. Jesus in all of them. That tells me he's every day. He's my season every day. If you understand season, there are different four seasons. But if you understand his season, we are the salt of the world. Y'all don't understand. You should be getting season every day. You ought to be salty every day. I just want to help somebody mind change. 
that doggone leading lady, she always coming for it. Yes, God called me to be a coming for a woman. Somebody came for me and I got saved, so I'm coming for you. I just want to help somebody. I just want to bless somebody. My Lord. Come on, let's go on to verse 8. I'm going to get you on out of here. Look what it says. Jesus said unto him, rise. Jesus said unto him, rise. Take up thy bed and walk. Can I say it like I want to say it today? Get yourself up and bring what you got with you. He told him to rise up and take thy bed and walk. He didn't give him a chance to make an excuse. But I love about the man, he didn't even have a chance to think about it. He said, rise and I can't walk. See, you got to do stuff just spontaneous. The, the very thing that was holding him down, he began to carry it around. As a testimony, as a witness, will you be a witness for the Lord? Could you get yourself up and get out of that state of being, that state of mindset, that attitude, that rage, that stony heart? I heard David said, create in me, O oh God, a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Ain't it strange that he said the right spirit because he knew some of us was going to have the wrong spirit. Look at yourself and ask yourself, am I carrying the wrong spirit? Am I, am I walking but I'm carrying all of my issues with me? I just want to help somebody. Tell the truth. I'm in a state that I don't need to be in. And from this day forth, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out because I declare change. I declare change in me. I declare change in my house. I declare change in my children. I declare change in my husband. You be the change they looking for. You want everybody else to change, but they don't see you changing. I should have brought some change with me and threw it out as a sign that something been broken over your life. I wish somebody just bring a little change and throw it up here. So that's a sign. Something broke. If you understand dreams, when you dream about a lot of change, they say that means some change have been broken. Something broken over your life. I know it may not be popular, but I know that God I serve, I know that everybody can make a change. You looking at a crazy cocoa pot woman that God delivered from a stroke and everything else. God did it. Somebody shout, God will do it. Do you believe that today? Do you really want change? Do you want your mind to be renewed? I'm just talking about real folk that don't mind me telling them the truth because you can't get to Jesus until you make a change. Quit fooling yourself. How about shout out of the speaking in tongues and falling out and shouting and you don't like nobody. Quit trying to prophesy when you need the word of God. Quit prophesying. I ain't trying to be mean and mad. I'm just trying to tell you to come clean before the Lord. Get right. Get real. And let God make your mess into a masterpiece. I'm all messed up. But I know a man that's got a plan for my life. And I love it when he said, I am the author and finisher of your faith. My mess is in the book that he's the author of. My transformation is in the book that he's the author and the finisher of my faith. Because I trust God. I trust him to bring me out. I trust him to fix my marriage. I trust him to save my children. I trust him to fix my grandchildren. What are you trusting God for? Or are you just fussing every day? My God, Jesus said, what is Jesus saying to you today? 
He said, rise up. Take up. Go ahead and shout out some stuff you need to take up and throw it out. Take it up. What, what, what he said, uproot that mess. Get it up. Get it in your hands. And I promise you when the man began to carry the mat, I promise you somebody found that mat in the trash can somewhere. <laughs> On the side of the road somewhere. What are you doing with your mess? Are you picking it up, holding on to it, and when you get in a certain state of mind, you pull it back out? I know God is in this place. I know God got you on his mind. And I know God is releasing the fire over you. Some of y'all feeling the fire right now. There's something burning all through you, all through your heart. You ought to tell the Lord, burn me up. See, we need this flesh to die. Every time we act according to not what God say, when we act like that, that means we need to die. Bring your mess. Tell somebody, bring your mess. Bring your issues. And everything else holding you down, bring it to the Lord. Bring it to the altar. And you tell God, I won't go back. I declare change. Quit waiting on folk to change you. Quit waiting on folk to change before you act right. The change is for you today. Because you don't know. You may die today. I don't know. I may die today. All I know, I better have a change. Change in my heart. Change in my mind. People should see a change. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. From whom all blessings flow. On Radio Land, I know, or on Facebook, or wherever you may be listening, I know you tired all on YouTube. I know you tired of being where you at. I know you tired of being abused and used up women. I know me and you tired of, of somebody saying you a deadbeat father. Change. And watch God move. Change. Change. Don't you know when Jesus changed you, you no longer the same. Let's go over the scripture. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. When the Holy Ghost get a hold of you for real, when the word of God go down in you and take root, this is what happens. The word of God says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But what I like about this passage of scripture, he said, if, that means there's no guarantee. Because you said you change. That's got to be a sign. That ought to be a light. <coughs> but if any man, if you say you save, that means you are in Christ. He is a new creature. I have to come for those folk that say they saved. I'm just going to help you quit deceiving yourself. You saved, but you still doing everything in the book. I'm going to drink my drink. I'm going to smoke my weed. I'm going to sex before marriage. I'm going to do whatever, and I know God got me. I beg the difference. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that means if your attitude is still the same, if any man be in Christ, that was the old you. He is a new creature. The word of God say old things are passed away. That old you ought to be dead. To pass away means to die. Behold, that's joy to me. All things are become new. Now look at yourself and see could you see the newness? If you don't see it, nobody else either. Let's not fool ourselves. If any man be in Christ, there ought to be something new. Your whole talk, your language is new. You don't roll your eyes at folks because you got new eyes. You got spiritual eyes. 
I'm looking to see how I can bless somebody. Huh. Somebody looking for new today. Somebody looking for something. Where you at? If you're really looking for something today, why don't you stand to your feet? What you mean? I'm standing because I'm new. My old stuff is sitting down. I got a new praise. Ha! I can't help nobody. You say you say, but you can't open your mouth and give God the praise. That's the old you. <coughs> the new you have the spirit of I just can't help myself. I got to praise, and I got to get it out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, get up. Your help is here. If any man be in Christ, ask somebody, do you really want to change? Or are you going to stay crippled blind? See, you blind to what the devil is doing. And you paralyzed. See, folks that got so paralyzed, they don't come to church no more. They got an excuse why they don't come to church. You paralyzed. Because the word of God tells us to come. We should come to fellowship with other believers. I ain't going nowhere. I'm, I got my own church. You need to be delivered and set free. Everybody want to be under, want to be in authority, but not under authority. My God is a God of honor. That's part of your change. That was the old you. Can't nobody tell me nothing. Somebody all of be running said, welcome to the new me. My Lord. I told you I'm not going to hold you long because they don't need me preaching long and you ain't got it yet. I'm going to preach change until a change come. He changed my heart. He changed my walk. But why are you still walking in the clubs? Why are you still walking in somebody else's house when you know you got a wife or a husband? Yeah, Y'all don't want to mess with me today because I'm full of the word and I'm full of challenges. I'm going to challenge you to tell that stuff you got to go. I'm telling you to tell that alcohol God that took the taste out of my mouth. Tell them wondering eyes, all I see is my wife or my husband or Jesus. See, I'm coming for you because you need to change. How many know they need change? How many know they're not worried about who's looking at them then they need change? Look, every day I'm declaring change. Every day the Bible said die daily. Every day something about you or your life supposed to die. You need to look around and see what's still alive. If it's a lie, step on it and kill it. Kill it with the word. Kill it with the word. Tell those old infirmities that's been ailing you for years, you got to die. Because my God is a healer. He is a deliverer. Quit selling for less when you can have the best. There's a change. The first change is salvation. Those of you on YouTube and whatever platform, Facebook, just look at yourself and see and be honest and say, I really do need to change. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Because I, this is a whole nother year. And I don't want to live like this another 50 years, 20 years, 10 years. You already been tortured long enough. But nobody can change you. You got to have a made up mind that I'm not going out like this. I'm not staying in this situation. I want something better for my children, my grandchildren. But you be the change they need. You be the example they can follow. If there's one that say, I really know I need to change, make your way to the altar. Those of you by way of Facebook and Instagram or wherever you, you can call the numbers that they have posted. And somebody get with you. If you don't understand how to make the change, we'll minister to you. If you're looking for a church home, we're the place to come. We ain't playing around. We ain't playing church. Amen.
I know they may put up a new number as well. Amen. I can't quote it right now, but you'll see it on, the, on there. Amen. And also, just look at yourself. And, and, and remember, God saw him for all those years. You can't fake that stuff. You can fake it with men, but God see you. He see what you're doing. He see what you're not doing. He see where you need change. You might as well make up your mind today and say, I'm coming for change. Change involves obedience. Change involves just what it said, change. Change your mind, you'll change your life forever. Let God become your mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Come on. Don't be ashamed. Come on and say, I declare change today. Let the people know I'm changing. The word of God says, if you be ashamed to own me before man, I'll be ashamed to own you before my father. I'm not telling you to join new faith. I'm telling you to change. We'll love to have you, but can you come and declare change? Will there be one? 